the topic today are big six skills. And uh, you might be wondering, you know, what, what, what is big six? Um, why do I need to know about this? When you think about your time here in seminary, um, I, I hate to break it to you, but you're, you're going to have problems. You know, life is full of problems, right? Well, when you come to seminary, it's not problem free. But when I say problem, I'm using this definition. So problem is a question, right? When you have a problem, you've, it's, it's, you've got a question about something. You, you need to, it's an inquiry. You need to consider it. You need to find a solution for it. So when you think about your assignments in this way as problems that prompt inquiry, prompt your consideration, need to, need to find a solution, how are you going to go about approaching your assignments? Okay? That's what the big six does. The big six is a way to take your problem, right, apply information to it, and come up with your solution. Now, this is an approach, it's problem solving, right? I mean, we, we all know how to solve problems. Some of us may be better than others. Some prob some, even some types of problems are easier for us to solve than others. Um, but the, um, this basic formula applies. This applies to your assignments, right? If you find the right kind of information, apply it to your assignment, you come up with a submission, your solution, that with, if successful, will earn a high grade, right? Okay. When you're out in your place of ministry, you've got an old church building, right? The roof needs to be replaced. You've got a problem. You need to find information about how to repair that roof or replace it in a way that's going to fit with your budget and meet your needs so that you can have a solution that your church roof isn't going to leak. So the point I'm trying to make here is that every kind of problem that we have to solve, we use a problem-solving method to come up with our solution, right? So it's your assignment problem-solving method. It's the church roof problem-solving method. It's a pastoral care concern problem-solving method. Okay, this is something that you can adapt and use throughout your time here in seminary, and I hope beyond when you're in your place of ministry. So what does this look like? Well, the first stage is asking these questions. What exactly is your problem? What's being asked of you? What are your questions? Okay. This is the task definition stage, stage one. So since most of you uh, that are here in person, uh, I saw you at MS100 this morning, and you were introduced to your very first assignment, the God Talk report. Let's kind of think through how, this, how we would apply this to your God Talk assignment, OK? So what's the problem? I have to write a 500 word essay. That's my problem, okay? <laughs> Loosely, it's not really a problem. Yeah, you get the idea. Um, so what's being asked of you? Okay, you've got, that's where you go to your assignment page, right? You need 500 words. It needs to be in a particular format. You need to use specific types of sources, okay? It needs to be objective and not, um, not subjective, not your personal interpretation. It's, you know, very objective. Those of you, I'm looking at you, you're, you, you're in the second year, so you can remember what this was like when you did this last year. So, um, so this is your task definition. You're looking at your assignment. You're kind of just gathering yourself, collecting, you know, figuring out what it is you know, because your assignment sheet is going to give you certain parameters. This is critically engaging that so that you're organizing it in your head exactly what you need to do. Okay. Once you've done that, you move on to the next step. These are the questions that you're asking yourself at this point. What do I need to get started? Where might I find answers? 
and what types of sources are going to be more useful to me. Okay, this is your information seeking strategies. This is where you start to prepare yourself for finding information. Okay, for the God Talk assignment, you're given very specific parameters. I need to quote the Bible, I need to quote a journal article, I need to quote a book, I need to quote a website, and I need to talk to somebody. Okay, so if we were applying Big Six, second stage would be to look at all five of those types of sources and say, hmm, what exactly do I need to get started? Where am I going to find books? I'm going to find those at the library. Where am I going to find websites? Well, I can find those on the computer. Am I going to use Google? Am I going to use a different search engine? Am I going to start somewhere else on the web that will give me a vetted list of resources, of, of websites that I know are reputable. Okay. Um, I need to talk to somebody. Who's going to be the best person that I, I need to talk to? Is this going to be a pastor? Is this going to be somebody that's just in my church? Who's going to be the best person to talk to for this assignment? I need journal articles. Do I know how to use EBSCO? What can I do to, um, to be more familiar with EBSCO if I don't know how to use EBSCO? Okay. So that's stage two, preparing yourself to find the information. The third part is when you actually get to do something. Go out. Go on your information expedition. This is where you're searching for your sources of information you're locating them, and you're accessing them. So it should make sense then that this stage is called location and access. So this is, this is the stage where you are actually performing those searches on the computer, where you're actually coming into the library and going to the shelves and pulling off uh, books that you think would be relevant to your um, topic. Once you've gathered all of your sources, you've gone out, you've done your information gathering, the fourth step is to engage the information. This is where you're reading. You're reading for purpose. So when I say read for purpose, you don't have to read word for word. Okay? When you can skim. You can scan. You can look at the headings. Look for the keywords to really zero in on the on the information that you're trying to pull out of your source, okay? So for your God Talk report, you pull a book off the shelf about shepherd, use of shepherd or shepherd imagery in the Bible, you don't need to read that book cover to cover. You need to find little nuggets that are going to work best for your assignment. So look at the table of contents. Read the first paragraph and the last paragraph of a chapter that has a title that seems relevant to you. These are all um, techniques that you can use to engage your information um, at a level where you're pulling things out of it instead of getting lost in the weeds. So this stage is called the use of information stage. Now I will, I'll go ahead and point out here and I'll, I'll reinforce this when we get to the end. You may get to this stage and, and find the, the information that you've pulled in, in stage three, the location and access, it's not giving you what you thought you would get from it. You're not finding exactly the right information for your assignment, for your project. And so you may have to go back to stage three. You may even have to go back to stage one or two and revisit how you've defined your problem and what types of sources you need to be looking at. So. The big six process does not, it's not linear, right? It, you can jump back and forth as you move through it and discover, um, you know, where you need more information. Okay, so once you've collected all of your, you've engaged all of your sources, you've been taking notes, 
The fifth stage is what's called um, synthesis. You're organizing all your information and your thoughts. You're developing a plan. You act, you create, you solve. So for a lot of you, this will be the actual process of writing your assignment, completing your assignment. So you, um, but you notice though, organizing, developing a plan, act, create, solve, that's a lot to put all in one step. So you could break it apart, you know, do it in, in, in two pieces where you kind of look at everything that you've collected and um, kind of organize it in such a way, start to outline what you're going to write about. Maybe put that to the side, wait a day or so. If you do that in the morning, you could come back to it in the evening and then do your creative part where you're actually writing it putting it together into a draft form, okay? Um, but this is the stage where all of that work happens, where you really, where you start to pull together everything that you have learned through the information gathering stage and put it into your own words. After it's all over, this is really important, you want to ask yourself, how did this go? Am I happy with the end result? Is there anything that I would do differently next time? This is the evaluation stage. So evaluation is um, it's a really critical piece that a lot of us want to skip over, right? You know, we we get to the we get to the point we finish our assignment, we're really tired, right? We don't want to think about it anymore because we're done. And so we just want to turn it in and it be done. Um, when, we, when we have that attitude uh, and we don't make time for evaluation, we really miss out on a chance to reflect on how it is we are doing the work um, and what our process is. And in that reflection, we can revise how we do our work so that the next time you have an assignment, you can maybe approach it differently. And then you actually get better at how you do your work. So then this is how we kind of get out of, you know, I'm a recovering procrastinator. I don't know how many of you <laughs> would be willing to join me in that statement. But you know, this is how we overcome some of the stumbling blocks like procrastination or um, the, the blank page paralysis. You know, you, these are, so this reflective piece is a really, really critical, important part to, to engage in. So all together, you get the big six. Uh, now, I did not invent the big six. Uh, the big six uh, is trademarked. Uh, it's from uh, two educators, Michael Eisenberg and Bob Berkowitz. Uh, and they have a website, bigsix.com. So this, these are skills. Um, these are life skills. And these are skills that are being taught uh, from K through grade 20, which is where we are now in graduate school. Um, and I, I really, um, I like it because it's a way uh, that I think all of us can relate to. It's problem solving. And it's something that we can use while we're in classes, but it's also something that you can take with you when you are not in classes because we're always going to have problems. It's part of life. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so as I mentioned, um, and I said I would come back to it, you know, I didn't, I, I don't present these linearly. You know, they're, they're around this, this thinking cloud for a reason. Um, because you'll find as you interact with the big six that you, you, may have, you may get to location and access and say, you know what, I'm not finding the types of resources that I thought I would find. Um, so maybe I need to go back and revisit my information seeking strategies. Another thing that I like about this is that it gives you, um, 
It gives you a way to think about approaching your assignments and approaching your work um, that you can map out and put on a calendar, for example. So, you know, again, like a recovering procrastinator like me, it's really helpful if I can say, okay, my deadline for this paper is, I don't know when the God Talk paper is due, but it's, you know, what, August 22nd, maybe? Okay, we'll just say that it's probably not due then. So say my assignment is due on August 22nd. Today is August 10th. Okay, that gives me 12 days. I can say, well, it's going to take me about a day. I'll, I'll dedicate a day to task definition. Or, you know what, task definition, information seeking strategies, I could do that in one day. So, so day one, I'll combine these two. Uh, day two, I'll do uh, location and access. And you know what, I'm going to take day three off. Um, day four, I'll, I'll use, do the use of information. And day five, I'm also going to build a buffer in there so that in case I don't find what, in case I realize I didn't find what I was looking for, I can go back, give myself some space to do that. Okay, so then that, now I'm up to day six, right? So day six, seven, and eight, I'm going to work on synthesis. I'm going to start writing my paper. I'm going to give a day to outline, a day to draft, and a day to revise my draft. Then, um, so that's, that's day eight. That's two days, right? Two days before my assignment's due now that I can look at evaluation and look over, you know, maybe give it a day off. So then the day before it's due, I can go back and do my evaluation and say, do I like what I came up with? Do I need to revise it further? Um, you know, what am I going to do differently next time? You know, did I, did I find that this part was really hard? This, um, the information seeking strategies and location and access, was, was that really difficult? Did I take more time to do that than I maybe should have? Well, if that's the case, maybe after I turn in this assignment, I'll go talk to, talk to the librarian and see, um, you know, see what she can do to help me um, streamline my search process. So then you wind up on the day that your assignment's due, you have given plenty of time for this entire process and your work is gonna reflect that. 